Pixie has to poop. It's worms. Puppy pad filled with poop and worms. <laughs> Sorry for the hood. Bad hair day. What is going on guys? It is Filmfluence here with another video. Today's video will be us producing a wine commercial without a slider. The two main things that I wanna go over in this video is, number one, you don't need an Edelkrone slider to get slider shots. And number two, sometimes your original vision will be trimmed down to nothing once you get to the editing room. And that is simply because you try something and it doesn't work. And then you're like, well, there is no back to the drawing board. Okay, there it is. We got our grapes, we got our cheese, we got our set dressing. For this setup, we have one soft box directly above the subject to kind of give it this blanket of soft, daylight balanced light. Over here we have two little tiny uh, LED box panel thingies that are absolutely trash. Just kidding, they're great. They're kind of like the aperture little tiny boxes. That was trash. It's giving this red light around it on the edges here. And then behind we have the complementing green color on our textured backdrop, which kind of looks like grass, which is interesting. The big issue here is how are we going to dolly in or slide in without a slider? Well, little tip. I was gonna make a video on its own about this, but if you take a tripod and you put its two front legs there and you fly this back leg up, you can actually push in and pull out just like a slider would at pretty good speeds. You are limited in where you can point it and rotate it and all that because, I mean, again, it's it's not an Edelkrone slider, but it gets the job done if you're just trying to do a simple push in. Disclaimer, if you're going to use this tripod hack, you have to keep in mind when you get in post, it's not gonna be perfect. You're gonna have to use some warp stabilizer. So quick tip, warp stabilizer. How do you use it? What settings work the best? Well, I've actually found that if you take your warp stabilizer, you drop it onto your footage. Smack lip, whoop, drop down, snap, ah. You go into drop down menu and you click enhanced and then detailed analysis and put it at 3%. When you do this, I found that it's not gonna warp your image a lot, but it's going to make it at least stable and suitable for your films. We have baby oil and water, make it look nice and wet there on the grapes now we can't eat the grapes that's fine now the other element that we added into our scene just to make it a little teeny bit better was the fog now i didn't use it throughout the whole thing and mostly i just filled up the room with it wafted it around a good bit <sighs> once that settles down we'll get this nice haze look all right what are we looking at Nice. So the first shot I wanna talk about is the macro lens shots. So I don't actually own a macro lens, but I picked up a cheap $30 macro lens adapter that kind of turns your lenses into a macro lens. Um, you can pick them up on Amazon. I think the ones that I got were for a micro four thirds sensor. So they're, I think they're like Mikey, M-E-I-K-E, -E, maybe. Maybe I'm saying it wrong, I don't know. But you can pick those up for really cheap. They also have some for full frame, so go check it out. It actually is probably one of the best investments and cheapest investments that I've had for doing macro photography, which I don't do. I've only done just this once. So, so I toss those adapters on and already with a 35 millimeter on a micro four thirds, which is the equivalent around 70 millimeters, we were getting a pretty good look, but I had to get like one inch, not even one inch away from my subject to even capture it. So be aware of that. Um, it was getting annoying because it kept hitting the lens and bouncing the camera and doing all this mad stuff. And it took like literally an hour to get these shots, um, but it worked. And then I actually used the macro lens shots to overlay because if you actually spin the bottle and use the lights, which is what we were doing, we're taking these two LED lights and just rotating them around the subject. But when you use those lights around the bottle itself, it actually captured this cool looking grain slash glaring effect. And then I just overlaid that on the rest of the video to give it kind of this uh, film burn kind of look, which I think worked for the most part. Now, like anything, some of the ideas that we had just didn't work. 
So we want it initially for the bottle to fall over and then come back up. And I was gonna use masking and tracking and background plates and do all the stuff that you do in filmmaking that you don't like doing. And I started doing it and I was like, I do not have time for this. So I just scratched that idea. So instead of it falling and rotating, coming back up, it just kind of comes up out of nowhere. So we just reversed the initial falling shot. I mean, could it, would it have been cool? Yeah. But is it worth it? Probably not. Well, maybe. If you're doing it for a client, go ahead. Another shot that didn't make it in the final cut was the bottle cap of the wine bottle shoots off by itself. Grapes come out of the top. Someone grabs a grape, puts it in front of their eye, squishes it, and wine comes out of the grape itself into the glass below. Now, if you had given me four days, I would have actually done that shot, made it happen, figured out a way to make it happen. But I just decided to scratch that because it didn't turn out the way that it was looking in my head. So I just said, ah, we're just going to replace ice cubes with grapes. Not that that makes any sense, but you know, we have to do something with the grape that came out of the bottle. And then we didn't even use the shot where the grapes come out of the bottles because again, masking. So instead we just had one shot where we had the mask where the person went in and grabbed the grape and pulled it out. And even then it was so boring that I had to mirror it twice to make it look at least somewhat interesting. And it actually turned out pretty good. I mean, that's an example of getting a shot for something else and then using it for a completely different reason and having to make do with, okay, this doesn't quite make sense with what we're doing here. But if we do it this way, maybe it's more of a stylistic look. And it, it kind of pulled through. Um, it's said that you write a film or a video three times. Once when you write it, once when you shoot it, and then the last time when you edit it. You have to be able to make do with stuff that didn't go to plan, and you have to be able to cut things that you wanted to see or figure out different ways to do the same thing. And that's kind of what we did for this. Grab. And this is why so, you don't so, become a filmmaker. So that didn't work, but we realized that we have a turntable, so why don't we just uh, use the turntable to turn it and then grab it off? Oh, I don't know. Maybe that would have been a good thing to think about 20 minutes ago, but we didn't. The next shot that I want to talk about is the corkscrew off. For the initial idea, again, it was going to come off and grapes were going to come out, but it's always cool to have a cork come out of a bottle for no reason, and unexplainably so. We left the camera in the same spot. We put the bottle there. We got a shot of the bottle with the cork in for reference. We got a shot of the bottle with the cork out for the actual shot. And then we stuck our cork in this little wood piece and just twisted it with our hands and moved up in frame. Same framing, right? So we get the lighting exactly the same, try to match the movement of what it would do. And then in post, obviously there was a lot to work to be done with that because I had to take the cork and I had to put it in the bottle and have it animate out. And I had to use my hand to get the parallax effect of it going up, so otherwise I would have used a turntable. Well, that kind of made it difficult in post because I mean, you have all this movement from my hand that's unwanted. So I actually had to go in and take out all the side to side movement, match it up with the bottle. So I had the background plate and then I matched up with the bottle, took all this movement out and just left the up and down movement kept the twist the same, everything the same, and then I masked it out, just the cork, and then feathered the top and the bottom of the mask to capture the motion blur of it moving upwards, and that was pretty much it. Other than that, it was a little bit of color correction and then adding a shadow on top of it to look like it was actually coming out of the bottle. Um, then sound design in it. That's, that was pretty much it for that shot. So yeah, just a short wine advertisement video. We've been dying to put some of these techniques into practice. And I think it turned out pretty well overall. Um, hopefully you guys learned a little bit from it, but again, the two main things of this video that I wanted to point out, because everything is a learning experience in filmmaking, is number one, don't be afraid to make changes in post, because it's inevitably going to happen. Don't throw it out, don't scratch it, just say, okay, what can we do with what we have? Do we need to redo some things? And number two, you can actually achieve really nice push in, pull out, even side to side movements without a slider of any sort. Just grab your tripod, pop up a leg, and get to work. All right, that's pretty much it. Bye.
Well, that's not a wrap because we gotta go through every single battery we own. Here we go. We got it, we got it. You got a friend in me. You got a friend in me. I don't know the, the worst of the words, <laughs> but I got a friend in you. <laughs> Dumb.